The Cisco Modeling Labs tool for lab study for Cisco exams has long been a great tool. It just wasn't a great fit for CCNA. With the late 2024 introduction of CML Free, now it's a great fit. In this video, I'll introduce CML Free and talk about how to get started with it for CCNA study. What we really want to talk about is CML Free version. However, we want to talk first about the entire product family so you get a sense for where CML Free sits in that, and then talk about software architecture for all the CML products to see how VMs work and get some terminology down because that, af that affects some decisions you'll make when you're installing CML. Now, everything we're talking about here, I'm going to put it inside the context of CCNA. So I've got the CCNA cert guide cover there as a reminder. So I'm not going to go into every nook and cranny of CML, but going to focus on things that matter to someone who's studying for CCNA. So when we get into the CML free specifics here in the third topic, I'll zero in there. It's a great fit for CCNA study. And then I'll talk about these first steps you can take again, thinking about a CCNA candidate when talking about those first steps. Now the entire series, I'm keeping that CCNA context in mind. So we'll have this video first, and this is the intended lineup in this early 2025 set of videos. For instance, the next one is about how to build your first lab and then how to monitor its performance to see how well it's working on your computer before you even think about upgrading the hardware, for instance. All right, let's jump in and talk about CML Free. First off, CML can run on your computer. I'm going to talk primarily about how to run it as a VM. So you'll have some virtualization software, and you'll have this piece of software that you'll download and install, and we call that the CML Controller VM. So it's a virtual machine on your computer. And when you install that, you'll assign it a number of logical CPUs and an amount of RAM for it to use. But it's not just a VM they're running for you to use. It's actually a VM that itself creates things that also look like VMs running inside CML. So maybe in a design tool that you'll see, you'll say, hey, I want to have one LAN switch and one router, like you see those icons. And those will be VMs that CML starts. And it'll take some of its capacity for CPUs and RAMs and assign those out to the devices like one CPU and one gig of RAM for that switch, one CPU and three gig of RAM for the router and so on. So the amount of capacity that you give to your CML controller VM dictates how many of these routers and switches you can run. All right. So keep that context in mind as we walk through the next little bit. Of course, everything I care to talk to you about is in the context of CCNA, so I'm going to keep it there, but it's good to get a big idea of what's going on. So somewhere around 2016, Cisco announced this product. It wasn't called CML then. It was called Viral, V-I-R-L, back in those days. Then Viral grew up to be called what we today call CML Personal Edition. So here's the idea. It's software that you can install and use personally. The shorthand for CML Personal is CMLP online and there's an annual fee for that about 200 bucks and for that 200 bucks per year you can run 20 nodes concurrently now some nodes don't count against that total but like most of your cisco operating systems for routers and switches and the like those will count one so you could run a lot of nodes far more than you need for ccna study with this base cml personal edition license it's meant for one user and if you want support you don't call tac you post a message on a community board at the Learning Network, and somebody will reply, hopefully, and get you an answer. Now, this last column says RefPlats. That's their term that's shorthand for reference platforms, which means Cisco device operating systems. So with CML Personal, all the ones that are available with any version of CML are available. Several router operating systems switch operating systems, and so on are available. So that was great. CML personal edition, and then over time, people said, hey, I want more than 20 nodes. So Cisco came out with Personal Plus, which for a little more money gave you a few more nodes. So that was great. And that was effective for those who were going past CCNA. But honestly, at this kind of money per year, it made most CCNA candidates shy away. And by the way, to run this many nodes... A lot of people had to upgrade their hardware. It was more than, say, your personal laptop or desktop computer could handle. 
So fast forward to late 2024, and Cisco had made some other relevant modifications to CMLP and CML Personal Plus, and they added this new variation called CML Free, and the big news there is there's no annual software cost. So it's free software from Cisco. It's just fewer nodes, five concurrently running nodes. Now you can design all the labs you care to. You could have a hundred labs designed. You can only run five nodes at a time. All right, so that's the big difference. The other big difference is it doesn't give you all the available operating systems. The good news is it gives you the best ones for CCNA study. It gives you the low overhead router image, the low overhead switch image, and a low overhead firewall image, although you don't need to practice that for CCNA. So it's a great fit for free study, and you're very likely to not need a hardware upgrade to run it. And we'll explore that in this very video series. So let's talk a bit about the architecture. Now let's just say you've got Windows, which is fine, or Mac. If you're using a Mac, this only works if you've got an Intel CPU. Newer Macs don't have Intel CPUs. They have Apple M series chips. All right, so if you've got an older Mac or any Windows machine, you can run CML as a VM. You can't if you've got Linux as your base operating system. So that's your environment first. Then you install one of the VMware virtualization apps, depending on whether you've got Windows or Mac. And once that's installed, and by the way, those apps are free from VMware as of somewhere in 2024, so you don't even have to pay for that. All right, so you've got the virtualization app there, so you can run a VM, and then you download from Cisco CML Personal or Personal Plus or free, and you install that VM. So it's a relatively straightforward install process, but when you follow the install steps in the documentation, it'll tell you things like, hey, we want a minimum of eight logical CPUs. They phrase that as four physical CPUs, which translates to eight logical CPUs and a minimum of eight gig of RAM. Now, I think you can run CML free and less, but that's what the documentation says currently for version 2.8. Now, this process I'm talking about here is true for CML Personal, Personal Plus, CML Free, running it as a VM. So now you've installed it and you can start this VM and it's running. Once it's up and running, you'll see the console of the VM. It'll tell you what IP address the controller is using, the CML controller. So you open a web browser and you web browse to that IP address and you connect to the graphical interface of the CML controller. And then you can do things like place two routers in a design and two switches and cable them together and start the lab nodes and access the consoles of the devices. So your user interface to the controller is just a web browser. That web browser can be on the same computer where you're running CML, or it can be on another computer as long as you have IP connectivity between them. All right, drilling down a little bit, let's think about CML again. Here's your controller VM, and let's just say you gave it eight CPUs and eight gig of RAM for the minimum as described in the version 2.8 of CML installation documentation. Life is good, your CML controller is running, and you start to use it, and you get to the user interface, and you decide, hey, I'm going to drag and drop one switch in here and one router. You don't get to choose how much CPU and RAM those are allocated. That's built into CML. In the CML documentation, it will tell you, oh, this operating system is going to use one CPU and one gig of RAM. This other one's going to use one CPU and three gig of RAM. So you design that. Now, when you're designing, you're not burning that capacity. But as soon as you start those nodes, CML is using that. That capacity comes from what you've defined for the CML controller. In this case, two total CPUs of the eight we gave to the controller are now being used by those network devices we're running, and four total gig of RAM are being used by the network devices of the eight we've assigned to the controller. So you can see, if you tried to run 20 nodes with CML personal, you're going to run out of eight gig of RAM and eight CPUs long before you reach 20 nodes running, so you need more CPU and more RAM in order to take advantage of CML Personal and Personal Plus, whereas CML Free gives you five concurrent running nodes, so maybe that eight CPU and eight gig of RAM 
suggestion is plenty. And in my experience, it is indeed plenty for running CML free. By the way, you bring up those nodes, you start them, you're at the CML user interface. There's a way then to click and reach the console of each device from this web browser window. So now you're into the console of the devices. CML free has limited options for those reference platforms, those node types, but CMLP has all. So here's a screenshot from CMLP where you get into the canvas where you design a lab. The canvas has this grid in the background. And if you tap on this little icon with the three circles with lines, it brings up this area of the screen where you've got node types listed where you could point and drag and drop them onto the canvas to design a lab topology. All right, so notice there are five router icons here in the middle, and those are with CMLP, the five different router operating systems you have available to you. With CML free, you get only iOS on Linux. That's that one. It's an iOS XE image. But with CMLP, you get CSRV, which is the older cloud image that you really would have run in cloud environments. CAT 8000 V, which is the newer cloud image you would run in cloud environments today. iOS V, which is traditional iOS built for virtualized environments. And then even the iOS XRV, which is meant for service provider environments. So that gives you an idea of the variety you have. And there are lots more here with the full set of RevPlats with CMLP. CML free is a great starting point. Now, I didn't mention it before, but CML free, CML personal, personal plus, it's all the same software. What's different are the number of concurrently active nodes and which reference platforms you get. All right. So with CML free, you don't have to pay for it. In fact, the installation process, you don't have to go through the licensing part of the installation with CML free. It's very simple to get it going. And then you may or may not need to upgrade your hardware, but because the only ref plats are the ones that are low overhead, the chances that you need to upgrade are relatively small. In the next video in the series, I'll talk you through how to monitor that to see if you do. All right. So just experiment with that. So what do you get? You get one router image, one switch image, one firewall image, as far as Cisco operating systems go that you can configure and learn with. All right. They are the lowest overhead options. The router image is called IOL. The switch image, IOL, L2. L2 meaning layer two to emphasize the layer two switch features. There are also four different Linux host images available as well. Now, here's a screenshot from CML free in that same version of CML. Now, from a few moments ago in the video, when we had a canvas up and we clicked this icon with the three dots and lines, it brought up the same list of nodes, but it was a much longer list. There was a scroll bar on the right and we had five router icons. Well, here it's only one router icon, IOL. You want a router? That's the one you use. Simple, right? There are two switch icons, though. There's IOL L2. With this one, you put it in, and you can configure things you need to learn for CCNA. With this unmanaged switch, it is a switch. All the ports are up. They're in the same VLAN, and you can't configure anything. All right. So if you just need a switch to plug cables into to create a LAN, use that one because guess what? It does not count against your five node limit. It doesn't consume CPU or RAM. So just basically need a LAN, use that one. Need to configure features and learn, use IOL L2, for instance. So talking about CML free specifically, the ref plats or the operating systems, IOL and IOL L2 are the ones you're going to use most for learning, router and switch. Now, if you read the Cisco documentation for CML, They'll even say that these images don't use a CPU. So let me take a tangent on that. There's a different software architecture for the IOL images. And Cisco just tells us a tiny smidge about that. Basically, if you think of most of the router and switch operating systems as being VMs controlled by CML, the IOL images aren't full VMs. They're very basic. Now, Cisco doesn't go to the point of calling them containers. Containers take a lot less overhead than VMs, right? But less overhead than VMs. So the documentation claims that there are no CPU usage. But when you go and start these nodes in CML, the statistics you see act like, yeah, 
they were allocated a CPU. So documentation versus software. The software says, hey, you start one of these, it takes up a CPU. You start one of these, it takes a CPU. Now, if you start either the router or switch image, the docs and the software will say, hey, I've used also a gig of RAM with this one device. So what's that mean? Worst case scenario, if you start a router and it's using one CPU and one gig of RAM, at most, well, you can only run five. So if you're running five nodes, five CPUs, five gig, that's the most you're going to consume with your network devices running in CML. So you should have enough capacity if you've assigned your VM, that minimum of eight CPUs and eight gig of RAM, you should have enough to go around. Now, continuing to talk about some of the ref plats, there's that unmanaged switch, which per the docs and per the software, when you start it, it doesn't claim any CPUs and RAM. It's, it's not really doing much of anything. You can't configure it. It's not running a Cisco operating system. And I mentioned four Linux images. I think the two most likely that you'll end up using are called Alpine and Desktop. I'll leave you with a task to research which ones you might use, but just so you know, each of those use one CPU each, but only half a gig of RAM is consumed by those. All right, so now what? How do you get started with this stuff? Well, of course, install it, try it out, right? So. Your first step, if you haven't already before seeing this video, is install the appropriate VMware desktop virtualization tool like VMware Workstation Pro or Fusion Pro, as you see there. Then install and start CML free. By the way, if you go to this link down at the bottom and look at the resources tab, that's where you go to find the place to download CML free. There you go. Then familiarize yourself with the CML user interface. Now, you will get some of that by accident through this CML free series that I'm producing, but there's a full free six hour course on this, six hours or so, I think, at Cisco U. And the nice easy URL for Cisco U is u.cisco.com. And if you go there and just go in the search box and search on CML, you'll find the CML course and it can teach you things about how to use CML or you can just experiment for yourself and follow along with this video series. Now, the fourth and fifth steps in this starting point, I'm talking about in the next video. I'm gonna show you how to build your first lab and how to start the lab and start the nodes, but I'm gonna focus on your experiment with performance, how much CPU and RAM you're using, so you get a sense for, hey, I know the software is free, but will it run on my computer? Do I have enough capacity? That's the next big question, um, so I'll talk you through how to watch that and see how it goes to see if you can run it without having to spend that extra money. Hope you enjoyed this video introducing CML Free. I hope you try the tool and follow along with the rest of the series as well. If you're new here, click subscribe and the bell and you'll get notified as new videos come out, typically on a Wednesday morning U.S. East Coast time. And hey, as always, likes, comments, and shares are a big help to me. Join in with that. Thanks for hanging out. Good to see you. Talk to you soon.